my personal right. I mean, guys, it's oh, yeah. your record. I cleaned the windshield. Now you can see Brandon's forehead smudge marks from where we've been working on it. It's gross. So this is uh, Nick Eklund's truck. We're doing delivery today, uh, technically yesterday, but we uh, decided to call it quits and go have dinner at McGuire's before finishing all this stuff up. So this is a truck that got brought to us as a running driving truck with a CM849. Uh, we did a video in the past with it, kind of showing the things that we were gonna be removing and changing and getting rid of. So this video is gonna be a, you know, the after part of a before and after video. So the cool part about this truck is Nick Eklund runs a, a shop or a, a tuning company called NRE Performance. So he does calibration work himself, you know, and I appreciate the opportunity, me being a calibrator that he brought me his project and, you know, allowed me to do the full transition from stock ECM over to the whole MoTeC setup, as well as, you know, spend the day yesterday showing him how to do a lot of stuff with the MoTeC. If you haven't used MoTeC before, it's, it's a huge, it's a really steep learning curve. So making a diesel go fast is one thing. Making a diesel go fast with software you've never done before is a very different thing. So, you know, I did all the base file setup. I made it run all the base programming, showed him how I did all the things and I'm just handing it over. So now it's his project to go to the track with. Of course, he can call on me whenever he wants for, uh, you know, if he makes any major changes, can't figure out where a setting or a button is at or any of that. But you know, for the most part, this is a turnkey race car and he can go to the track and go play. So um, I'm sure he will be as addicted to this stuff as, as I was when I first got started. So let's go over a couple things that we changed and um, get this thing in the trailer and on the way because it's Sunday and I don't feel like working anymore. This dyno at my old shop went 1636 on nitrous, but this is 1521's our loud ass truck. 1521's our, our dyno record. All right. 1521 so is this dyno record here at this house? Here, so far, yeah. Don't worry, Ch Chance will beat me, for sure. <laughs> so we're close. We'll give it another whack, uh, another bit of fuel. I, I, wonder, I wonder if we can take dyno record, like, all together on fuel. Go up another click and go to 100% load. I bet it'll do it. What's the worst that could happen? You know, it blows up, catches on fire. Okay. Burns the house down. I don't, I don't live here. If I burn the house down, I won't either. I think I passed the fire department like 25 minutes ago. We got a water hose. <laughs> it even has like a fire department end on it too. <laughs> on the racetrack, we get the neutral as fast as possible because if the cars, if the cars out of shape or anything at all, you don't want the back tires skidding. Oh. So like, you know, down the track when you're when you're wide open throttle down the track, the chutes come out automatically in our cars. So like, and, and the fuel nose is over automatically too. So you'll be driving along and you can just hold it right to the floor and then it'll just go back to idle and the chutes are out. And your job as the driver is to just relax, take a breath, and get it neutral and straight. That's it, that's all you gotta do. So, cause a lot of shit, the tra end of the track comes fast at 200 miles an hour. Not that I'd know, I've only been 183, but. That's fucking close enough. Yeah. <laughs> you know? 183 at 3,300 pounds is still fast. <laughs> you'll find that the more power you make on a fixed size tar charger, the peak power comes back and back and back because you you run over it with fuel. A Garrett GTX compressor is not that aggressive. So what'll happen is you'll start spinning the, I mean, 71 pounds of boost. You'll start spinning the fuck out of it and it won't make any more because you're just, it's like spinning a boat prop. It won't, you can't grab any more. The, the, uh, a GTX compressor is low and it's got all 13 blades at one height where when you look at like a, a really aggressive turbo, it's actually a 14 blade, but you can only count seven because the other ones are down in there. But then front that stick way up is why it makes pressure. And that's why like our hearts makes what it makes compared to one of these. So, and the idea is we want to give it the amount of fuel mass that it will go to that 13 and a half if it has to, right? But we're gonna lean it out with nitrous. That's all nitrous is, is just a lean out tool. That's hot shots pour in fuel. Depending on how you look at it, that shit either looks orange. Do you like it? It's orange, pink, or green, depending on what's behind it when you pour oh. it. There's pilot one and pilot two. Pilot yeah. two is the one closest to the main. Mm -hmm. So you can run two pilot, main, and two post if you want. Do you ever play with pilot for spool up, or do you think it's not really needed with nitrous? Um, I run pilot until the engine tells me it doesn't want to. Okay. So I just go up in engine speed, and I turn pilot off and on. And if it uses less fuel mass, 
then it means it wants it. And yeah. if it doesn't change it or whatever, then there's a point where it just doesn't care. Yeah. Typically big, high, you know, big injectors with a lot of body mod don't care if it's on, so. These are 400, 400% extra? Your drive shaft's spinning 7,000 RPM. That's why I'm up front. That's terrifying. Whew. <laughs> like sitting on a bomb. Yeah, yeah, you are. <laughs> Dodge sheet metal's not gonna protect you. <laughs> drive shaft in the asshole a trick to not make these go um over current is don't let them go to 100 okay. percent. so i set even though the table goes zero to 100 in your motec i set it so that 100 percent because it's it's zero out of 255 is max so i had it set to 280 so that when you set to 100 in here it was like 93 percent duty cycle actual um it's something you don't want to do very long but for a nitrous setup that's just like Four seconds it's fine um it's kind of a cheap way around the overcurrent stuff you just don't want to do that on like a fan or something that's constant duty because yeah. it'll fucking start make that thing glow in the dark I was trying to see what the horsepower was and I was looking at the graph instead of the thing and like when I floored it it just laid over like a <laughs> like a broken tack but I didn't have time to look at what number that was and I'm like it's doing something what do you mean 1710 we jumped uh, 20 degrees on tire 10 what's the brake right now it's got to be 400 fucking degrees <laughs> Okay, so from the driver's compartment, there's a lot less stuff going on in here, uh, a whole lot. Now you'll notice this truck doesn't have a dash that we can normally hide some stuff behind, so everything's just gonna be exposed. But that's how it was when it showed up, we just have a whole lot less stuff going on. Starting with the screen, this is the ECU Master ADU7. We have it set up with our normal setup, so we're watching boost, intake air temp, oil pressure, trans temp, coolant temp, oil temp, uh, if battery voltage, and vehicle speed. And I can press this button right here, so this is the main screen I'm telling you guys about that we're gonna look at going down the track or just sitting there. And I can press a button and it goes to another screen and this shows all of the PMU 16 stuff. So for instance, I can hit the purge. See how that blinks and tells you the current on it. Or I can turn the water pump on and it shows you the exact amperage of the water pump and I can turn a fan on as well. And now I've got 25 amps, 23 amps total with nine amps going to the uh, water pump and uh, looks like, I don't know, 20, 15 to 20 going on the radiator fan right there. That's kind of a cool thing if you're trying to do diagnostics. So we'll turn that back off and go back to the regular screen. There's a was a button down here on the on the brake that used to be like a stage button. Uh, and now we just have the whole launch control. So that this little that used to be a button right there. And the driver used to have to, you know, push that button to activate launch control. And now it's just all on the button. So so this is this is the favorite one that we like to use. This is a 15 button keypad. This right here is our shift on the fly. So the center of the dash uh, will actually change on this. It goes from shift on the fly zero through nine for a 10 total position. You have ignition, you have start. I'm not gonna hit that right now. Bottle heater, nitrous purge. This is launch control. So you turn that on. Now your launch function is, is functional and you're no longer in burnout mode. This button here takes you from the different screens on the PMU screen, which you can add multiple. I just have two set up. That is our trans cooler. That is our radiator fan. This is our water pump. These three functions are automatic. The water pump comes on whenever the engine is running. The radiator fan comes on um, at a certain temperature of the uh, coolant and the um, trans fan comes on at a certain temperature of the transmission. And then here we have the lights. So we have two rotary knobs on here. First stage of lights is interior and the marker lights. So the lights are set up to be used in order that they'd be used on the racetrack. So if it's nighttime and you need lights, the first stage of lights is interior and marker lights. So people can see you and you can see what you're doing. You go one stage more, it turns the interior light off but leaves the marker light on. This would be if you wanna go down a well-lit racetrack and you want photographers to be able to take pictures of your vehicle without the headlights on because they hate that. Top end of the racetrack, you turn it one more click, 
now your headlights are on, okay? So now you're coasting down the top end of the racetrack, you make your way off the track, you come to a complete stop, you wanna see what you're doing, one more click, interior light comes back on. So it's in order of operation, and then as you know, your push car comes and gets you or whatever you need to do, you just turn the interior lights off because with the interior lights on, it's harder to see outside the vehicle, right? So that's our light switch. And then we have four buttons down at the bottom for anything future. So we actually have, let's see, five outputs unused on the PMU for him to be able to add whatever he wants. And then there's buttons down here to be able to control it. So we'd rather put too much of a keypad in place than too little because you can always not use buttons but if you don't have the buttons there and you wish you did you can't add them right so and the rest of it's going to be on the other side so let's go check that out all right so this is a carbon fiber panel we have in place of the big i think it was aluminum it might have been some sort of sheet metal either way it was massive so there was a massive sheet of electronics here of all different types brands sizes all wired together some of it was functional some of it was not either way we got rid of all of it so this is the ECU Master PMU 16 power management unit. This is uh, controls 16 high amperage outputs. So our fans, our nitrous, our, our lights, our pumps, all that stuff. This is when we have five channels left over on. So we have a complete functional race car with five channels left over. So as you can imagine, these things get uh, busy quick and we have had projects where we've had to run more than one of them. So if you've got a very circuit heavy project with turn signals and all that stuff. We may have to use two. Just keep it in mind when you're planning your project. Motec M142. So between these two things, uh, they talk to each other via CAN bus. They control everything on the vehicle. Obviously the Motec controls engine and transmission direct. This controls all of your high amperage stuff. They talk to each other. They might as well be one box. They work so good together. We move the battery up to here. All the wiring is just, it's exposed. We don't have a dash to hide it behind. So that being said, it's really easy to work on. Let's take a look at some of the other connections under the hood and behind the truck, and we'll uh, we'll go over the rest of it. By the way, this truck just set our dyno record um, last night on the dyno, 1710 with a little nitrous pill, 1638 on fuel only, which is more than I expected out of a single uh, GTX 88 millimeters. This thing rips, runs really good. He's going to run up to uh, Maryland, and I think he's got a race plan for this weekend. So let's look at the rest of this stuff. All right, I'm in here. Uh, I managed to get in here without putting my foot through the radiator. I don't know how many times I can do that without putting my foot through the radiator. So let's call this the last time I have to climb in this bed. Okay, so trans fans, you can see our connections right here. This is a DTP high current um, type connection. So very serviceable if you ever have to change the fans or move them around, the wiring comes right up through here. We have another DTP connection right here. This is for the bottle heater. This all comes from the PMU. So it's important when you're doing a project like this to use the right size connectors with the right um, amp, amp, ampacity, I think is the word, amperage capacity. I think it's ampacity. Either way, uh, we got our bottle heater. We've got our fans, master power switch. That was already here. We just ran new wires to it. All right, let me get out of here before I put my foot through the radiator. So this looks the same uh, besides the wires. We didn't do any mechanical work to it. We prefer not to actually. We'd like to just do the wiring part of it. So. You know, we have our bulkhead connector up here. So we have, uh, there's a total of three bulkhead connectors. We have our main one up here that runs all of the engine wiring. So like all of your sensors for the cam, crank, uh, fuel pressure, all that stuff comes through one. The injectors, it's on its own separate one. And then there's a third bulkhead connector that we use down in the trans tunnel to get all the information to and from the transmission. So this thing's all cleaned up, works really nicely. Something we did want to talk about here is this, I don't know what's, what's faulty here whether it's the headlights or the headlight bulbs but these things fall out super easy so i'm going to suggest that he gets some different bulbs that fit these housings better because we've knocked these out a few times just playing on the dyno and then i'm i'm sure they're expensive and they're going to look cool bouncing down the racetrack so but all that stuff's functional um this project's ready to go put it in the trailer send it home and uh we've got two more gray trucks to wrap up and send home and pull the rest of the projects in and see how many we can get done for the rest of the year.